everyone. So for today's lesson, what you are, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> what you're gonna need is your puzzle pieces. Um, if you don't have this, you can just use a white piece of paper and we can cut it. Obviously you have to be careful because these puzzle pieces can come apart, which is part of being a puzzle, but you gotta be very gentle with it. Uh, and some crayons or markers or something to color your puzzle with. So today we are going to be talking about how God sometimes makes plans for us that aren't exactly what we would think that we would want, but it's part of God's plan no matter what. So today we are reading about Joseph. Jacob lived in Canaan. He had 12 sons, but Joseph was his favorite. To show how much he loved Joseph, Jacob had a wonderful coat made for him covered with colorful embroidery. Joseph's brothers were jealous, and they became even angrier when Joseph began telling them about his dreams. Last night, I dreamed we were collecting sheaves of grain, when suddenly my sheaf stood up straight and yours all bowed down before it. What are you saying, they growled, that you're going to roll over us someday? Get lost! Then Joseph dreamed that the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars were bowing down before him. Even his father was upset when he heard about the last dream. Do you think your mother and I and your brothers are going to bow down to you? Don't get too big for your boots. But Jacob secretly wondered what Joseph's dream actually meant. Hmm. Joseph's brothers had had enough. The time had come to get rid of their annoying brother. So one day when they were out in the fields, the brothers tore off his precious multicolored coat and threw him in a deep pit. They would have left him there, but soon they saw a caravan of Ishmaelite traders passing by on their camels on their way to Egypt. Quick as a flash, the brothers decided to sell Joseph to the traders. Then they told Jacob that his son had been killed by a wild animal. They lied. In Egypt, Joseph was sold to one of Pharaoh's officials, a man named Potiphar. Joseph was clever and hardworking. And soon Potiphar placed him in charge of his whole household. But Potiphar's wife told lies about Joseph to her husband and poor Joseph found himself thrown in jail. In prison, Joseph met Pharaoh's wine steward and his chief baker, who had angered Pharaoh. They both had strange dreams, and with God's help, Joseph explained what the dreams meant. The baker dreamed that the birds were eating bread from his basket. Joseph sadly told him that Pharaoh would order his execution. The wine steward dreamed about squeezing grapes into Pharaoh's wine cup, which meant he would be pardoned. Joseph asked the wine steward to remember how Joseph had helped him when the steward was released from jail. He said that he would, but he forgot. Hmm, so wait a minute. Joseph hasn't done anything wrong, right? But his brothers were jealous and they did something wrong and they sold him into slavery. So then Joseph went to go work for Potiphar, but then lies were told about him and he got thrown into jail even though he hadn't done anything wrong. Poor Joseph, these are probably not what he had had planned for his life. One night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a strange dream. He was standing by the Nile River when out of the water came seven fat, healthy looking cows. They were followed by seven more cows, but these ones were ugly and very, very thin. But those thin cows ate up the fat cows and looked just as sickly as before. Pharaoh had another dream. In this dream, seven thin heads of grain swallowed up seven healthy, full heads of grain. In the morning, Pharaoh sent for all the wise men of Egypt, but no one could tell him what his strange dream meant. Finally, the wine steward remembered Joseph. <gasps> oh yeah. And then the slave was brought before Pharaoh. 
God helped Joseph explain the dreams. He told Pharaoh, two dreams will really mean the same thing. The seven fat cows and the seven full heads of grain are seven years of healthy crops and fine harvests, but they will be followed by seven years of famine where nothing would grow. You will need to plan very carefully to prepare, he said. Then Pharaoh replied, clearly, you are a man for the job. I am putting you in charge, Joseph. You will be second only to me in all of Egypt. So Joseph traveled through the land, riding in a fine chariot to make sure food was put aside for the hard times ahead, just as he had foretold. For seven years, the crops grew better than ever before, and so much grain was put away in the storehouses that he gave up counting it. After seven years, the famine began. When people began to run out of food, Joseph opened the storehouses and sold the corn. No one in Egypt went hungry. This had all been part of God's plan. So what we see is that if he had never been sold into slavery and if he had never been put into jail, Joseph never would have been able to save everyone. He saved all the people in Egypt. That was so huge. But that doesn't mean that it came easy. It was definitely a puzzle that you kind of had to figure out like, wait, why is this happening? But the thing is, God knows what that puzzle is gonna look like in the end. So for our activity, what we are going to do is we are going to take our blank empty puzzles and we are going to color them however we would like to. So for mine, I, I taped the back of this one so that it wouldn't fall apart. Should have probably taped the other one too. But what I decided to do for mine was I colored mine as a rainbow, just like what Joseph's coat looked like. And then I wrote two Bible verses on mine that made me kind of think of this feeling of putting things together like this. You know, a lot of times in our life, we don't really always understand what's going on, but God always understands. And so when we have puzzle pieces like this, when they're just on their own, we might really not know what they mean or what they look like, especially if something was colored on here or if one of my words showed up on here, you would say, wait, what? Or like if, if I only had half of one of these puzzle pieces, if I just had this, it would be kind of part of an H and D-E-C-L. What? I don't even know what that means, right? But when it all comes together, it all makes sense. So what my two verses are, the first one is Jeremiah 29 verse 11, and it says, I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. Plans for peace, not disaster a future filled with hope. So that reminds me that God always has plans set out for us and it's going to be peaceful and hopeful and amazing. It's not gonna be something horrible, even though trying to put all those pieces together might be a challenge. We're definitely gonna be challenged from time to time, but that's okay. And then the next one says, you can make many plans in your minds and in your hearts but it is the Lord's plan that succeeds. So we see that Joseph probably had a lot of plans of what he expected his life to be like. He probably expected to grow up and continue herding the sheep and take over his dad's business maybe when he got older and, and farm or you know tend to the animals. Not probably going to Egypt and saving everyone from that famine, from being hungry. He saved their lives, but that was probably not part of his plan, but it was God's plan. So I would love to see what you guys decide to draw and then see when they're all taken apart, it's probably gonna look crazy. It's gonna look so weird and like puzzle pieces all around everywhere that don't really make any sense. But we then will put them back together and see how amazing our creation is and us remembering that that's what God's doing every day. He's putting in the next puzzle piece for us. So please pray with me. Dear God, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us life and letting us live in this puzzle. We might not know exactly what's gonna happen next. And all of the pieces sometimes might not seem to make sense. Or maybe we try to force one piece to sit next to another and maybe it just doesn't fit. 
please help us to see where the right fit is and help us to put together the puzzle of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. See you next week.